This video was made possible by Displayed. How do you imagine the city of the future? What you're seeing here is Saudi Arabia's answer to that question. The project is called Oxagon, and it consists of two parts, an area on land and a floating structure in the ocean. Together, they form an octagonal city with eight sides. The unusual project was announced in November 2021 and is currently in the starting phase. But why would they build a city like this? The city Oxagon is a key part of the development of the northeastern Saudi Arabian Neom project. This so far sparsely populated region is intended to write a truly new chapter in the history of the country. The kingdom's strong finances result from oil revenues and are now invested into future projects, attracting international companies with the help of subsidies and partnerships, all aimed to build a future economy that is independent of the oil that has made the country rich. Neom consists of three currently announced regions, including the Line, a more than 100 mile long linear city, about which I already have made my own video in the past, Trojana, the mountainous region of Neom, and Oxagon, which is supposed to represent the industrial powerhouse of the region. So what should it look like? The city of the future. Well, in Oxagon, the part of the city on land and the part floating in the sea are separated by a waterway. Here, container ships can enter to reach the city's port, which is to become a transshipment center in the region. Goods can be transported directly from the ship to the factory over short distances. The idea here is that supply chain times can be kept extremely short. The project planners also hope to benefit from the proximity to the Suez Canal, through which around 12% of global trade passes. Therefore, Oxagon will be located along what already is a key global trade route. The ocean part of the city will become the largest floating structure in the world. And according to promotional material, it will not only be an industrial center, but become a complete city with housing and even leisure activities. As for the industry, the country wants to attract companies from certain sectors, specifically future technologies like artificial intelligence, robotics, as well as companies with a focus on sustainability. Some already announced partnerships, for example, are a facility for the production of green hydrogen and ammonia, as well as a desalination plant. But apart from some announced partnerships, when looking at the city it also becomes clear that it is still very much a vision. A model city that can definitely look different once completed. The Kingdom produces opulent promotional films that advertise the project and is sponsoring international events and sports. More so than a rigid construction project, this city tries to paint a utopia, imagining how urban and industrial life can look like in the future. And the sci-fi-like proposal to build half of the city in the water appears as impractical as it appears symbolic. The idea being that it represents the harmony of humanity and nature. Here, an oceanographic institute was also announced, which is to become a leading institution in marine research. As far as the construction of the largest floating structure on Earth is concerned, it remains to be seen how exactly the structure will be made to float, and what measures will be taken against storms. And the question arises, how much of a focus was put into symbolizing sustainability as opposed to actually being sustainable? Does a city in the ocean really embody the harmony between humans and nature? Or wouldn't it be more sustainable to spare the diverse marine habitat in the Red Sea from construction and build in the barren desert instead? And how will they resolve the contradiction of on one hand saying that the protection of the local maritime habitat is a key focus, when the other key focus is to build the future megaport of the region? And it's contradictions like this that beg the question, whose vision does this city really represent? 
The city and the entire Neom area are the flagship development projects of Mohammed bin Salman, also known as MBS. He is the seventh son of the current king Salman and is next in line to the throne. Immediately after Salman became king, he appointed MBS as Minister of Defense. From there, MBS continued to expand his power and has long been regarded as the de facto leader of the country. But in order to finance Oxagon, Mohammed bin Salman is using a very unique approach. Of course, there is a multitude of income sources for the country, such as taxes. However, the profits of the government-owned oil company Saudi Aramco are the biggest single source of income for the country. Saudi Aramco has a monopoly over the country's oil reserves and is the largest oil company in the world by revenue. The company had been overseen by the Ministry of Petroleum and Mineral Resources and paid its revenues to the Ministry of Finance, which is responsible for the government's budget. Saudi Arabia also maintains a large sovereign wealth fund called PIF that invests in private companies, many of them foreign ones. However, King Salman changed a lot of this structure. First, Saudi Aramco's ownership structure was changed. The Saudi Aramco Supreme Council was formed, chaired by MBS, who now directly controls Saudi Aramco. On the other hand, the administration of the PIF was transferred from the Ministry of Finance to the Council of Economic and Development Affairs, which is also managed by MBS. And it goes even further. Historic day for Saudi Arabia. After years of waiting, Saudi Aramco will offer investors a piece of the kingdom's prize asset. In a move driven by MBS, in 2019, Saudi Aramco went public with an initial public offering. 1.5% of the company shares were sold so that it is no longer a purely state-owned company. The offering raised 25.6 billion US dollars, making it the world's largest IPO. And the proceeds from this did not go to the Ministry of Finance, but instead to the PIF. And in February 2022, the Crown Prince announced a change that will strengthen the PIF even further. A full 4% of Saudi Aramco's shares will be moved to the PIF. As a result, this fund will have permanent regular revenue to invest in projects. But what does all this have to do with Oxagon? Well, it is exactly this PIF fund that Bin Salman is using to finance this planned city. Oxagon, as part of the Neom project, is organized in a close joint stock company that is owned by the PIF. It turns out that MBS does not exercise much of his power through the state budget, but through the sovereign wealth fund. The development of projects by the PIF enables the Crown Prince to plan projects with a top-down approach, and critics see this move as a way to circumvent the already extremely weak institutional hurdles of the absolute monarchy. But how do you imagine the city of the future? Is the assumption correct that our cities are failing? Contemporary cities couldn't cope with growth. Or do contemporary cities often have both? some aspects that need to be rethought, and also aspects that we can all learn from. Is it the image from above of an octagonal city that represents the ideal place? Or is it Paris, Cape Town, Amsterdam, or New York City? I love looking at these maps of cities from above. And this plate has maps like this for hundreds of places around the world. And not only that, they have over 1.5 million different artworks made by independent artists, which are printed on these elegant metal posters. And it's really simple to install, because with their easy-to-use system, you don't have to do any damage to your wall for installing it. Instead, you just apply this protective leaf to your wall, then stick the magnet that comes with it onto it, and the poster snaps right on. 
Their collection of artworks is absolutely phenomenal. And if you click on the link on screen right now, or use the link in the description, you're gonna get a discount because this plate gives my viewers 25% off if you buy one or two posters and 29% off for free or more. And the company even plants a tree for each piece you purchase. So check out their site and thank you for watching.